Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, Robert Garcia, candidate for mayor, city of Long Beach, as we continue our 22nd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. Our guest for tonight's show is Robert Garcia, candidate for mayor of the city of Long Beach. Robert, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. As you know, we uh, previously taped a half hour show with your opponent, and these two shows will be broadcast uh, back to back in the run up to the uh, June 3rd primary. Uh, Vice Mayor Robert Garcia, uh, why are you running for mayor? Well, I'm running for mayor because I love Long Beach. Uh, Long Beach is just a really incredible place. I think you and I both know that. I've, I'm, a, I'm a Long Beach guy. I think one of the great things about our city is its diversity, is the people, are the neighborhoods. If you think about what we have as a community, uh, we have the largest seaport in the country. We have one of the best universities in the state here at Cal State Long Beach. In fact, more people apply to Cal State Long Beach than any other university in the entire Cal State system. You think about our regional airport. You think about the neighborhoods. You think about the urban school district we have. Long Beach Unified is one of the top five urban school districts uh, in the country. So this is a really great place. And I think if you look at the last few years, we've done some really great things at the city. We've balanced the budget. We've gotten us to a surplus. We've reformed pensions. Crime is at a historic low. And so I'm running on a record of success at the city, and I'm running to move our city forward in the right direction. Uh, both you and your opponent uh, are truly American success stories, only in America. You, you emigrated from uh, Peru, and uh, you're the first uh, in your family to have graduated from college and then higher education after that. And you've been successful in your, in your political efforts. And your opponent also uh, has a quite, quite a remarkable background. So... Uh, I, I, I think there is that, that much of commonality between uh, uh, the, the two of you. Uh, what issues would you focus on most under a Garcia mayorship? Well, I think first it's important that we keep our uh, being financially responsible. I think the record that we've done over the last few years shows that. When I came, first came into office, we were at a $40 million budget deficit. Uh, pensions were still uh, really unfunded. We were having major problems with a lot of issues in the city. But if you look at what we did is we took our pension system, we reformed it. That's going to save the city over $250 million over the next 10 years. We took our budget and we brought it to the first surplus that we've had in almost a decade. So the single most important job the next mayor is going to have to do is to continue our responsible financial policy. I've been there. I'm ready on day one. I know our budget backwards and forwards. I know the players at the city when it comes to the budget. So that is job number one. But then beyond that, we've got to look at growth. The Port of Long Beach is incredibly important. We're going to be entering an unprecedented phase of competition at the Port of Long Beach from Asia, from South America, from Central America and Mexico. And so we've got to ensure that those jobs, and by the way, it's 30,000 direct Long Beach jobs that the port has an influence over. And you're talking about you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs indirectly throughout the region. So the port is our single most important economic asset, and the next mayor has got to be ready to ensure that that asset grows and that trade is growing, that we're building infrastructure in and around the Port of Long Beach. So those two things are incredibly important. And then beyond that, we've got to look at public safety. Crime is at a historic low, but there's still challenges in some neighborhoods. We've got to look at ensuring that we're restoring uh, services as we can afford them. More library hours, uh, increasing our park space, investing back in the streets and sidewalks. But while we're doing this, we've got to stay financially responsible. The days of overspending and overspending what we have, I think, are over. We've got to grow what we can afford. Um, and I think the other important thing is that Long Beach is an incredibly rich place when it comes to neighborhoods. And I think it's time again to, now that we are at this surplus, to invest back in these communities. Let's go back to public safety for a second. Uh, the number of police officers we have uh, has dropped significantly in the last uh, six years. Um, and, of course, we have a police academy this past year and another one next year, which we will actually just stop the hemorrhaging caused by retirement and uh, attrition. Uh, what's your view, and you've been the chair of the Public Safety Committee, 
of the council. What's your view as to the appropriate level of police manning? Well, I think the, the number I always look at is the crime statistics. And I think it's important to know that Long Beach, like I said before, is experiencing its lowest level of crime in 40 years. So we are doing really well on the crime statistic number. I think that is the single most important thing. Now, I also believe that we, ha we spent what we can afford. The reality is that I would love to have 100, two more, 200 more police officers. There's no question. But we can't afford one or 200 more police well, officers. Well, how many can we afford? Well, we can afford to probably, first of all, not lose more officers, and then over the next few years begin to grow perhaps five, six, seven officers a year. But, but we can't just you know, put out a number out there and expect to pay for it. We don't have the funds. And so, and, and so we got to be careful about that. Some have been critical of you for being the chair of the Public Safety Committee and not having holding any meetings for two years. What would be your response? Well, first of all, that's not correct. I think the, 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 the criticism was that I didn't hold meetings related to the budget in public safety. That's the job of the Budget Oversight Committee. I have meetings with the Public Safety Committee all the time. The one that you're the chair of? Absolutely. I'm, we have them uh, regularly, like, like all the other committees. And, and what kinds of issues do you discuss at those oh, we meetings? We discuss everything. I mean, we've discussed everything from modernization, police technology. The, we do the crime statistic quarterly review. We discuss um, things like sex trafficking and other issues that are important to the community. So we, can, we have those meetings uh, regularly, like all committee meetings. But, it, but it is, it's the role of the Budget Oversight Committee to discuss budget issues. There is a particular concern about the cutbacks in the gang unit. As you know, we have a substantial gang population in Long Beach, I think, 5,000 gang members, about 1% of the population, and we really need to somehow address that. Uh, and uh, one would think that uh, a robust gang unit would be necessary to help with that problem. Absolutely. We, we, can, we can have what we can afford. And I think what we did is we had to make some really tough decisions about cutting. Everyone got cut, by the way. So the police department, the fire department, libraries, we had to yep. cut everyone. But what happened? Now we have the surplus for the first time. We're putting more money into our reserves. The city is financially stronger today than it's been in decades. And I think that's something that's important. And you would pledge to maintain that fiscal uh, austerity uh, into your budget uh, Absolutely. It's job number one. Okay. We'll be back with more of our show, but first we have to pause for these messages. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com, the Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. Hello, I'm Jessica Hardy, a proud Long Beach native and a member of the USA Swimming national team. Having spent much of my life in water, I've developed a deep appreciation for the valuable role that this precious resource plays in our lives. In recent years, California's water supply has become unreliable. To address this reality, Long Beach residents have dramatically reduced their water use through permanent lifestyle changes. In doing so, Long Beach has made itself a leader in water conservation. As I work hard to achieve my personal goal of qualifying for the 2012 Summer Olympics, I encourage you to continue your tremendous efforts to use water in smart and responsible ways. So join me and your fellow Long Beach residents in strengthening the water conservation movement. By making small but significant changes in our water use habits, together we can ensure that we have a reliable water supply for many generations to come. At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. 